snakes. Fascinating creatures that are misunderstood and often maligned. Primarily out of ignorance and lack of awareness about their true nature and position in the natural world. There are more than 2,000 species of snakes in the world, with over 300 species of snakes being found here. India is a haven for wildlife. A vast number of snakes can be found endemic to Goa. There are four kinds of venomous snakes and a variety of non-venomous ones. The last three years have seen over 3,000 cases of snake bites, with only 21 being fatal. A common misconception is that snakes symbolize evil, poison and death according to many ancient religious scriptures, which have earned them a negative image. Most people despise, fear and avoid snakes as much as they can because they are seen as a threat, but the reality is far from it. Snake worship is a tradition that has been followed for ages where it is present in several ancient cultures. Here, snakes are portrayed as an entity of strength. Due to a snake's nature of casting its own skin, it represents rebirth, death and mortality. Several Hindu temples house snake idols and images carved on rocks. These idols and images are worshipped with flowers, diyas, milk and incense sticks to gain wealth, fame and knowledge. So the thing about uh, snakes, if you think about it, um, go back thousands of years and uh, you get bitten by a snake, there is nothing dramatic in the bite. You, it's an it's a innocuous looking animal, it, it latches on to you and then it's not like the bite of a tiger where flesh is ripped off or your you know, head is torn off, so you can see why there's a reason that the person's died. Here you, you get kind of pricked by this animal and then mysteriously a few hours later you are convulsing or foaming at the mouth or you know choking or something like that and uh, you're dead. So today we know that there is a venom and it affects enzymes and it affects uh, you know, different organs in the body and there's organ failure and whatnot and there's um, prevents clotting of blood and things like that and that's why you die. But if you go back to prehistoric times, there was no understanding of that. So it's very obvious when you think about it, it's the stuff of like voodoo or black magic or like, uh, or not just voodoo or black magic, uh, it's almost a, um, a power that can't be explained and hence the worship. So when you look at it from that perspective, it, it becomes very easy to understand why somebody would worship a snake because it's it's a supernatural phenomenon. People like first they used to say, okay, uh, in Nag Panchami, people used to worship snakes. But uh, whereas in uh, Christian like they would say, snakes are against, are against us. So it's... Like we have to educate people uh, that snakes have a major role to play in this ecosystem. Most common traditions follow in Goa is Nag Panchami, right? Where people worship the cobra and they feed it milk or they do some puja around it, which is a good thing. So basically it happens in the religion of Hinduism. Now Hinduism is basically about respecting and protecting the environment and all living creatures. It's, very, it's a very beautiful thing. So when, they, when people thought of protecting snakes because snakes are so important for the ecosystem. They focus on the most majestic and uh, descriptive snake which is a common cobra or spectacle cobra. Over the generations this was done to protect snakes, to respect snakes. Over the generations people started focusing only on the cobra and then finally it's not only on the cobra, it's on a kind of clay statue of a cobra. Right? But this 
this uh, worship started with the aim to protect snakes, to protect the ecosystem by protecting snakes. Right? So this is a very important thing. It's practiced very widely in Goa, and uh, people have lost the essence somehow of it. Right? The moment they see a cobra in their house, they either kill it or call someone to remove it from it, or remove the snake from the place. But if they come upon the day of Nag Panchami, they still bring a mud idol of a cobra and worship it. So people have forgotten the reason why they worship something. They worship it out of respect because they want to protect it, right? And uh, now they're doing it just as a tradition. The snake is a powerful symbol in Indian mythology and Hinduism. It is commonly referred to as Nag in the Hindi language. The Nag is worshipped by people across the country. Some of these mythical snakes are considered to be protectors, while others are thought of as destroyers. Okay, I was born in this village. And my ancestral house is just a few minutes away from here. This is my husband's house. And as a child, I liked to listen to a lot of stories. And I used to worry my dad. And he used to tell me stories every night. And one story that I always used to worry him was about a snake. So he always used to say, when the snake is one century old, they get feathers. You know? And then they fly, and I used to tell him, no, rubbish, tell me all rubbish. And then when I got married and I came here, just near that jackfruit uh, tree, there was a big hole. You know? And I wanted to come over to this property because my little dog had passed the side. And I climbed on that wall, and I saw a huge snake, all curled up, you know, such a fat fellow. Dry, dry skin, tall feathers. I thought of my dad. I had jumped from the compound wall and he was in between my legs, fast asleep. When I saw him, I did not know what to do. I said, maybe this is true, what my dad said. So I ran as fast as I could and I turned the side. And then when I went to see, he was all unwinded himself and he was standing and all the feathers were there. That was one thing I was really amazed to see and then I said, and my dad was still living. I said, whatever he had told me was true. Okay, so Neil and I moved here maybe 15 years ago and uh, it was quite a, as you see, very forested area and I was wondering how we could build a house without disturbing any wildlife or any trees and we've managed to do that. We've kept all the original trees the way they were, and we still see a lot of wildlife here. Uh, snakes galore, and we love them. So every morning there's some excitement of some wildlife coming and visiting us. So whether it's a baby monitor lizard that lives in this tree, she peeps out from here, and then we forget what we are doing and we are all like, oh my God, this is amazing. Or hornbills going across, this is their route. And again, I just drop everything and I come here. So this is my favorite hangout actually. So um, there were more, we just trimmed because last year in the storm, a lot of things, huge jamun branches fell and walls broke. So we've trimmed a lot. But there was a rat snake and Neil was walking and the rat snake just landed on his shoulder, kind of a stone, you know. But because we are familiar with snakes and we don't panic or we're not paranoid, uh, he was okay with it and he said, oh God, poor thing, I hope he's not hurt. And then he disappeared. It was a long, beautiful rat snake. And then a little later, Neil said, oh, come, come, I have to show you something. The rat snake was stuck. We had a different net. So he got stuck in this jali. And it was really sad. So I quickly got a pair of scissors and I had to cut and cut and cut and cut. So while Neil went closer, closer towards his head, caught him very carefully. And I, then we rescued him. We just left him out here. Because you're supposed to, if you 
The latest theory is when you catch snakes or when you find them and you want to relocate them, don't move them to a distant area. You have to relocate them in the same neighborhood. So we've had Russell's vipers, we've had um, two Russell's vipers, a cobra, and we've left them just up the road. And my sister was just asking me because there was a beautiful black scorpion. And my dog, Piku, was just staring at it. And I said, Piku, what are you looking at? And suddenly I saw this scorpion moving really slow. And I said, uh oh, I have to get this guy. So we got him, put him in the jar, glass jar. And then we went across and we released him. So my sister said, where did you leave him? I said, oh, just across. She said, oh God, what if he comes? I said, if he comes, he comes, yeah. You know, this is how we live. Uh, yeah, my, my favorite one is, uh so if you kill a snake, uh, obviously uh, the siblings or the parents are going to come back and like uh, take revenge. That's the most common one. So there's another one where um, the checkered keelback, which is a water snake, if it bites you on a Wednesday, uh, that's the day you will actually die. That's quite bizarre and it's like in few pockets of villages that actually believe that. People believe that snakes have milk, but that's not true. If the snake have milk, it will die. It will later die. The, the people, they keep the snakes hungry and then they let it drink the milk. And the snake, they bite us, it goes to drink the milk. So it can die later on. The sand boa, which people say, don't turn out of Malun. So that, it has only one head and the tail. But people take it like on Wednesday, on Sunday, it gets two heads. So I have told people, when, whenever I catch a snake on Tuesday or on Saturday and they say, ah, Sunday don't turn that way, to vanish the two heads. So I tell them, you keep it. If it comes to two heads, I will, you call me back. <laughs> so that is how I try to educate people because if we take it and then we say, they will not realize. But when they keep the snake with them and then they realize it's only the he head and the tail and not two heads. Snake hears music and they dance to it. Well, we all know that, you know, snake raises its sword in defense, just in defense. And the reason it moves or gives an appearance that is dancing is because it's following the movement of the snake charmer's hand. So it's scared of the snake charmer's hand and it's following the movement of the snake charmer's hand to defend itself. Yeah. Like if you're dancing to music, you would like to enjoy music. And if you're enjoying music, you're not scared of music. The very fact that the snake's hood is raised, it means it's scared. So it's definitely not enjoying the music. While snakes may not be the most popular animal on the planet, have you ever wondered why they might be important? Or perhaps why they shouldn't be killed? Snakes do not need to be rescued. It's always the people and the perspective on snakes that need to be rescued. Yeah, so we go up there and we normally end up rescuing the people and the perspective of snakes. Like a snake in the garden does not need rescue. It's there doing its thing, it's there hunting, it's there for water, it's there for shade. It's just doing its thing. But uh, the people are scared of the snake and when people are scared of the snake, they'll go to kill it. So that's a life lost and while killing the snake, they can bit get bitten. Now if the snake is in the house or it is stuck in a net or it is in, in a well, then that's when it needs rescue. For most calls, the snake does not need rescue. So I like to be an educator. Now when you have fear, you can't admire the creature. And when you can't admire it, you can't conserve it. We all need to know that snakes have to be conserved, right? It's a part of the food chain, food web that we have studied in even small when we were small and when we were in school, we studied about this, you know, it's a part of the food chain, food web. But we don't hesitate killing it. Uh, this is out of fear, so we need to get the fear out. And once we start getting the fear out, we admire it. So once this fear is out, people can start conserving snakes. Now there are various kinds of snakes. Some snakes are venomous, some are not. A very few are venomous. Most of the snakes are non-venomous. Now if it's a non-venomous snakes, it's amazing to have them in your surroundings. Like if it's a rat snake, Whittaker's bow, python, bronze tree snake, striped keelback, have them around your garden. They're good, they're serving an amazing role. It would be great if you could have a cobra in your garden as well, right? But you're scared of it because an accident can happen, the snake can get scared of you, it can bite you. And that's when you should know that a snake's venom is not designed to defend itself from human beings. It's designed to digest its food, it's designed to immobilize its prey. Its prey is a rat or a small dog or a small puppy or a frog or a bird. But not for a human being, it's not evolved to act as a defense me mechanism for a human being. So a snake will bite you only out of fear and as a last resort and it can't run away, it can't do anything else, it'll probably give you a few fake bites and then it will inject venom. So snakes are good to have around, you just need to know about them. Yeah. 
there are actually many good reasons to respect snakes and maybe even appreciate them. Snakes play an integral role in maintaining balance in the ecosystem. In most systems, snakes can be both predator and prey. Right now, snakes are plugged into the ecosystem. They are being eaten by certain animals and they are eating certain, certain animals. Um, if you pull snakes out of the ecosystem, all the snakes, I don't think any scientist would really be able to um, explain the ramifications of that as to what's going to happen. King Cobra, which, is, which lives in the Western Ghats, and obviously if the Western Ghats are um, destroyed and that ecosystem doesn't exist, then, then you will have less of those snakes. Those habitats are destroyed by climate change and obviously those would be affected. Some snakes specialize in preying on other snakes, like the king snake, which can prey on rattlesnakes because they are immune to rattlesnake venom. In Southeast Asia, the king cobra, which is the longest venomous snake in the world, is also a snake-eating specialist. At this given point, um, I think people in general need to understand that uh, snakes could be dangerous, they could be venomous, but it's part of the circle of life, right? So you take one thing out from this whole circle, you have a problem, right? Um, the balance in nature is highly, highly, is very, very important, I would say. Changing the image of snakes that people have in their minds about them being evil, scary and aggressive has been long overdue. Herpetologists, snake enthusiasts, wildlife enthusiasts and snake rescuers have been working towards this goal of creating an environment of coexistence between snakes and humans. This can only be achieved by properly educating people about the basics of snake behavior for prevention and first aid for cure. My request is to the public like whenever they sight a snake, don't be panic. Just give a call to the forest department and they will be at your doorstep to rescue that snake. Expose yourself, you know, like with anything. It doesn't, it's not just snakes. It's whatever you want to really be involved with. Make the effort. And nobody is going to, if you're lucky, maybe somebody might come and hand it to you on a platter and say, here, you know, I'm willing to teach you. Um, clearly through awareness. Um, I think it's important if uh, people were made more aware of uh, snakes and looked at it as um, something not to be, uh, something that you shouldn't be afraid of. Uh, number one, number two. I think basic identification helps in a huge way. Uh, knowing the difference between the four venomous snakes and the n number of non-venomous snakes is very, very important. Through this documentary. We hope you better understand the importance of snakes in our ecosystem and the need to have basic knowledge about them. We have attempted to debunk myths and misconceptions about snakes to change the image that you have about them from a negative to a positive one. With this documentary, we hope to help create an environment in which snakes and humans can coexist without thinking of each other as threats.